Today we're going to walk through getting started with the Swan, this feather compatible microcontroller from Blues. Based on the STM32L4 chipset, the Swan is a low power microcontroller, but also has enough flash memory and processing power to use in the most demanding embedded applications. It's also the most extensible feather compatible MCU on the market, with access to 55 pins for additional I.O. via its castellated edges. Now to program the Swan, you can use a variety of common tools like the Arduino IDE, STM32 Cube IDE, or Visual Studio Code with the Platform I.O. extension. We're going to focus on VS Code with Platform I.O. in this video, so you want to make sure you head to code.visualstudio.com to install VS Code. Then install the free Platform I.O. extension via the extension menu within VS Code. Now, if you're curious about using Swan with Arduino IDE or STM32 Cube IDE, be sure to consult our guides available at blues.dev. Swan also supports a variety of programming languages and RTOSs such as Arduino, CircuitPython, C, C++, and Zephyr. In this video, we're going to focus on the Arduino programming language. Again, if you want to use Swan with CircuitPython or Zephyr, for instance, take a look at the guides provided again at blues.dev. Okay, assuming you have VS Code and Platform I.O. installed, let's go ahead and create our first project. Open the Platform I.O. extension by clicking on the Platform I.O. logo in the menu bar. Next, click the Open option under the PIO Home menu, and finally New Project to create a new Platform I.O. project. In the Provided Project Wizard, give your project a name, choose the Blues Wireless Swan R5 as your board, and choose Arduino Framework as your framework. You can also override the default location where your project files will be saved if so desired. At this point, Platform I.O. may need to install a variety of software dependencies. Please be patient as these installations may take a few minutes or more, depending on your computer and network speeds. Once dependency installation is complete, your Platform I.O.ini file will open. This file allows you to configure deployment options and manage project libraries. To develop on the Swan with the note card, Replace your generated platform INI file with this. Now, I don't expect you to copy code from the video, so be sure to head to the Swan Quick Start on blues.dev to copy this into your project. Now, our instructions from here on are a little different depending on whether or not you're using an ST Link debugger. Now, these devices make it much easier to both debug and upload sketches to an STM32 based MCU like the Swan. So, we highly recommend using one. They're available in the Blues store at this link. So let's start with the happy path of having an ST-Link. If you don't have one, just sit tight, and or you can fast forward to the next section. Now first, when using an ST-Link, be sure to change the upload protocol to ST-Link in your platform io.ini file. Next, you'll need one or two micro USB cables. I'll explain what I mean in a second. Go ahead and plug the ST-Link into your computer over USB, then plug the connector from the ST-Link into the SWAN. Now the Swan needs to be powered to function, but the ST-Link doesn't provide power. So to power the Swan, you can either use a LiPo battery, or you can use a second micro USB cable and connect the Swan to your computer. This method is probably the more useful of the two, as it allows you to view serial output from the Swan. At this point, your Swan should be connected to your computer and looks something like this. Okay, for those of you without an ST-Link, let's start by making sure your upload protocol is still set to DFU in your platform io.ini file. Then you simply connect the SWAN directly to your computer via a micro USB cable. That's it. All right, now we're ready to write some firmware. Back in VS Code, open the main.cpp file in the source src directory in your platform io project. We're gonna perform the hello world of embedded programming by blinking the onboard LED on the SWAN. Replace all the code in main.cpp with this. Again, you can simply copy it directly from the Swan Quick Start on blues.dev. You'll note in the setup method, we are initializing the digital pin LED underscore built in as an output. Then in our loop method, we turn the LED on by setting the voltage level to high. Pause for one second. Turn the LED off by setting the voltage low. And finally pausing for another second. That's it. Now we need a way to upload this firmware to the Swan. If you're using the ST-Link, simply save the file and use the upload functionality of Platform.io to build and upload it to your connected SWAN. You should see the LED blink shortly thereafter. Alternatively, if you're not using the ST-Link, you need to manually place the SWAN into its bootloader. To do so, press and hold the boot button on the SWAN, press and release reset, then release boot to make the SWAN jump into its bootloader. 
It's important to note that this sequence, which again is press and hold boot, press and release reset, then release boot, must be performed each time you want to upload new firmware to the SWAN. Once the SWAN is in bootloader mode, you can use the same upload function of Platform.io to build and upload the compiled sketch to the SWAN. Now, when uploading a compiled sketch without an ST link, some of you, especially if you're on Windows or on an Apple Silicon based Mac, you may see a lib USB, that's LIB USB, error kind of buried in the VS Code terminal. Don't panic. This is a very common issue when programming with STM32 based MCUs. Just consult the written instructions we've provided in the SWAN Quick Start. To summarize them, on Windows, you may need to install a generic USB driver that supports libUSB. And on an Apple Silicon Mac, you likely need to install the appropriate libUSB package. You can do that via Mac ports with port install libUSB or with homebrew with brew install libUSB. Just note that as of the recording of this video, if you use homebrew, that libUSB package also requires you to have Rosetta installed. Finally, when your sketch is running on the SWAN, you can view the platform IO serial monitor by clicking on the appropriate icon on the bottom menu in VS Code. That's it, if you've gotten this far, you've set up your development prerequisites, connected your SWAN, written your first firmware sketch, and compiled and uploaded it. If you have any questions at all, be sure to consult the Blues forum at discuss.blues.io. Thanks.